Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and you are watching Indian Standard Time. We are in Kathmandu and the guest of honor today is Pradeep Kumar Gyawali, the Foreign Minister of Nepal. Welcome Mr. Gyawali. Thank you. Prime Minister Nand Modi is about to come here. So what is so special that he is coming within two months when uh, Prime Minister Oli was there in Delhi? Yes, actually it is less than two months. It is a manifestation of the uh, very uh, close relations between Nepal and India. Yeah. Uh, such type of high-level visits contributes to enhance, to strengthen and to deepen the mutual relations which we have, which we are enjoying yeah. uh, since a long. And uh, basically uh, there will be two major components of this visit. Yeah. One will uh, the cultural, uh, religious and the spiritual sides. Right. Uh, he is starting his visit from Janakpur. Okay. As you know, it is a very uh, historical site, a cultural center of very enriched Mithila culture. Yeah. And uh, since ancient time, ancient time, it was the center of the uh, uh, truth seeking. It was the center of the scholars okay. of at that time. Yeah. And uh, along with he is also visiting uh, Holy Muktinath. Right. Uh, it is a very famous religious site of Nepal. And the second component is uh, to uh, um, make uh, some significant progress about uh, the uh, economic and uh, development partnership between right. uh, Nepal and India. So that's very important because the cultural part between India and Nepal is something that uh, I think uh, Nepal's uh, more than 90% uh, of population adhere to the both uh, lifestyle, the family ties and also the uh, whole coming and going exchanges. So there was some sort of uh, misunderstanding between the two countries about the one segment of your population, that is Madhesi population. So where are you now on that count? Uh, yes, uh, there were some grievances yeah. uh, during the concession making process. Uh, you know, Nepal uh, made its, its constitution with a very democratic way. Right. Uh, our constituent assembly was mm. uh, very inclusive with uh, one third of uh, women representation and the represent representation of the every sectors and every corners of the society. Right. Yeah, the actually, Nepal had a very historic struggle. Uh, you changed from king Sikh kingdom and now you are a democratic country and even the communist parties are in power so that is one of the very striking thing that uh, most of the places where communist ideology is going down Nepal is being ruled by the communist party so it is really interesting to see that how Nepal emerges after this uh, Madhesi and non Madhesi confrontation so had you had any talk with Prime Minister Nayan Modi when Prime Minister Oli was there in Delhi last time? Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, uh, make some points about uh, the uh, communist ideology and uh, communist leadership here. Uh, I am not going to talk about uh, the communist in uh, other part of the uh, globe. Yeah. But in uh, our context, we are the inherent and individual um, part of the democratic movement. Yeah. When there was a Rana oligarchy, right. we were in the front line uh, against uh, that oligarchy. And we, uh, during these seven decades of the Communist Party's uh, Communist movement, we are always uh, fighting and we are leading the democratic movement. Right. So right. Uh, we are the uh, very essential part of the democratic movement. That's why it is quite natural that uh, the people uh, give their uh, clear mandate to govern the country. Mm. Uh, second, uh, it, uh, it is our uh, formal uh, position that we uh, do not uh, talk 
uh, or the internal situation with the other friends. Uh, it is our internal uh, matter, and if uh, and we are uh, quite able to to address and to settle uh, the problems if they are. Yeah. So um, in this time, uh, during uh, the high level uh, talks between two prime ministers, yeah. we uh, focused basically uh, the issues concerns of uh, mutual relations. Uh, so internal matters are internal matters, and uh, both leaders are quite able uh, to address uh, the internal problems. They are uh, within their uh, periphery and within their nation. Uh, that's yeah. really very good to hear that uh, you have resolved your problem, internal problem. Uh, but uh, given the fact that there has been so many development partnership between Nepal and uh, India, so what is the situation now? Is uh, something new is going to be announced in this visit of Prime Minister Nayan Modi? Uh, yes, you are absolutely right that uh, India is uh, one of the uh, l largest development uh, partner of Nepal. Right. We are uh, we have a lot of uh, projects uh, which are uh, undergoing uh, either uh, the grant assistance of Indian government or. Uh, the loans and other modalities. Right. Uh, but uh, we should acknowledge and we should realize that uh, the implementation part is not yeah. uh, quite satisfactory. They may, there may be many reasons behind yeah, that. Satisfactory. Uh, in, uh, not, uh, what I am talking is the implementation part yeah. uh, we have to uh, work uh, a lot to, to uh, enhance uh, to accelerate the implementations uh, maybe uh, I just uh, I was talking that maybe uh, through, uh, due to the long transition in Nepal yeah. it may have uh, created some impediments to, to uh, the slow process. Uh, progress on the implementation. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we uh, what uh, we uh, have agreed upon is that we should uh, we, we would accelerate the uh, implementation process so that uh, the projects will be uh, completed within the time time bound uh, routine. Uh, if there are some uh, problems, uh, there there are various mechanisms to address. Uh, so that we can uh, accelerate the uh, process. And third, rather to pile up the new agreements, mm. uh, we should uh, focus on the previous agreements. However, uh, during the uh, Prime Minister Ali's uh, visit last month, yeah. we uh, have uh, made a broader uh, agreement understanding on the uh, three areas I use uh, Nepalese rivers as well as Indian rivers to have a uh, easier access mm. to the ocean. Mm. Second, uh, a railway uh, railway uh, link will be uh, established uh, in the Raksol Kathmandu uh, site so that it can uh, enhance the uh, connectivity. And third, will uh, third is the partnership in agriculture sector. India has done a lot and uh, significant progress in especially in the organic farming, in the resource and in other areas as well. So we want to learn and we want to uh, co um, uh, collaboration in that regard. So most probably uh, there will be some uh, MOUs or agreements uh, during this visit and yes, yes and yes. one uh, significant um, step will the uh, laying the foundation stone of Arun Third Hydro Project okay. uh, of uh, 900 megawatt capacity. So there were some differences, I, I was hearing that there were some differences of opinion about uh, uh, sharing of uh, electricity between India and Nepal in the hydroelectricity projects. So uh, uh, how, how is it uh, standing now? Uh, actually, uh, we uh, made an uh, agreement, we signed a uh, power trade agreement in 2014 yeah. and it was a landmark decision uh, to uh, explore a new uh, area of the um, cooperation uh, in the energy sector. Uh, but later on, uh, Indian government, uh, government of India issued a directives and uh, made some regulations mm. which are not very um, positive to the 
फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन हाइड्रो सेक्टर इन नेपाल वट वी आर वी वांट इन हाइड्रो सेक्टर इज हाइड्रो सेक्टर इज अ बिग पोटेंशियल नॉट ओनली फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ नेपाल एज वेल एज इज कैन हेल्प द इंडियन रिक्वायरमेंट्स एज वेल एंड वी कैन मेक अ कम्प्रिहेंसिव यूटिलाइजेशन of our rivers uh, and to generate the energy to uh, control the floods which are the um, common problems yeah. of both the country uh, we can uh, make uh, irrigation and make a uh, agrarian uh, revolution so what came in between that uh, not picking up uh, I don't know. We uh, have raised uh, our concerns, and uh, Indian side has uh, responded positively. Uh, they uh, told us that we are we will uh, um, made uh, series of meetings with concerning stakeholders, and we will address your concerns. They have assured us. Uh, what we want is uh, that uh, Nepal uh, needs foreign direct investment in uh, hydro powers as well. so there will be no any that type of restrictions or uh, any uh, control uh, to right uh, yeah, easy yeah. Um, trade mane in that way uh, you can make uh, what they are mane what indian position was that ki either you make electricity in collaboration with us or we will not buy electricity from you uh, ultimately uh, it's uh, um, uh, it means Uh, that type of macadamization, uh, uh, so uh, it uh, controls the uh, Nepali's uh, private sector's investment. Yeah. We, we they are uh, pursuing that once we uh, invested in hydro sector, uh, we will one part will be internally consumed, okay. and the rest will be uh, exported. exported. Yeah. But it uh, discourages uh, discourages that type of disc, um, directives or regulations discourage the uh, Nepalese entrepreneurs as well. So, so, so we we have asked to be more positive uh, okay. to India side, Indian side. So th- no no answer has been given. Uh, uh, in last meeting we raised very um, categorically and. Uh, so far i know uh, the indian side has understood understood our concerns okay so uh, the other thing that is coming in between uh, nepal and india what uh, we were thinking and we were feeling that uh, it is a question of obor uh, though obor is a very ambitious project and uh, many in nepal thinks that uh, it will change the whole development scenario of the country so what is the position of obor now in nepal we just signed uh, the uh, belt and road initi- initiatives uh, framework uh, last year and we are in the process of uh, making uh, identifying uh, the projects to on uh, uh, the process of prioritizing them and to um, make a uh, understanding with the sign side i don't think that uh, there is any uh, necessity or any ground any rooms to uh, be more suspicious or uh, doubtful on that regard nepal having a landlocked country right. with uh, the uh, connectivity constants it needs broader connectivity that's why on the one hand we are on the process of bbin Yeah. Uh, um, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Nepal, which is, which covers basically th- two areas: yeah. one the road, and second is uh, the energy grids. Uh, our sole uh, object- objective to be a part of BBIN is uh, to have a more easier access and easier connectivity with uh, our neighboring and extending uh, extended neighbor co- neighboring countries. And we are BRI also is the similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to be uh, connected uh, more easily uh, with the second largest economy of the globe. Uh, so uh, the um, so I don't think that uh, there will be uh, no uh, any uh, that type of reason to be uh, worried about uh, the Nepal supports to have a broader connectivity with uh, both uh, neighbors so what type of agreements are you signing in obor because there is an apprehension all over the world 
and especially when uh, everyone saw that the situation of Sri Lanka has become, uh, it is in a way hostage to the Chinese investment. So, are you taking care of that situation? That uh, yes, we are, we are, we are uh, cautiously reading uh, the uh, uh, media reports and we are uh, making uh, the analysis in that regard. Uh, Sometimes developing countries uh, face some, some, such type of problems. Mm. When you uh, uh, borrow some loans from uh, World Bank, uh, you make understanding with the uh, uh, IMF or even ADB. Uh, we have to make uh, the terms and conditions more favorable in our national interest. So Nepal is uh, quite wise and able to uh, identify the national interest its national priorities and uh, how we can uh, pay, how can we uh, be uh, benefited uh, by such type of cooperation. Uh, so we are careful. So what is the understanding in OBUR? Who will control the roads after once it is made? Nepal or the agency who are in, in Nepal uh, in Nepal's territory it is totally uh, Nepalese own projects. Uh, it is our uh, sovereign uh, right to uh, make the control within our territory. Okay. Uh, when we uh, cross the borders, then there will be uh, understanding like with other countries as well. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there is no any question of uh, um, making any compromises on uh, national interest or sovereignty. So once they made, uh, suppose once China makes roads in Nepal uh, under OBOR, they will build and then they will transfer to you. What, uh, oh, uh, what will what? It depends what type of terms and conditions we um, accept. Yeah. Uh, if uh, it is uh, uh, grant assistance, then it will be handed over to Nepal. If it is uh, in the loan under the loan, uh, we should have to pay in the timely manner. And if it, it is a joint venture then there will be a modality how you can uh, utilize. So it depends what type of modality we follow and it is under the process. So one of the uh, opinions in India that it may pose security concern to India if it is controlled by the Chinese people. So I don't think so. You know, you know Nepal uh, shares 100, uh, 1,880 kilometers of open border with India. Yeah. And uh, we think Nepal, uh, Nepal has significantly con contributed uh, to make uh, this uh, open border uh, more uh, secured, more safe, and uh, uh, we have taken some burdens on that regard as well. So we should develop and we, our relations should be based upon mutual trust. Okay. If there is trust deficit, no can guarantee. Yeah, that, that, that so, is the main thing that uh, is coming. I don't think uh, there is any reason uh, to uh, to uh, suspect, uh, to question uh, some uh, any uh, that type of uh, doubt about the Nepal's uh, integrity and Nepal's. Uh, always uh, consistent policy that uh, Nepal is not allow its uh, soil to against any of uh, its neighbor. Nep uh, Nepal is very concerned about the genuine uh, questions raised by the. But Nepal. in Nepal, many a times questions are raised about the open border. There are uh, a section of political groups also in your country who tell that uh, borders should be closed, like uh, it should be made international border. So what uh, your government has been thinking about it? Uh, it has uh, two aspects. Yeah. One is, uh, yes, you are absolutely right, right that uh, open border are one of the um, very important uh, and uh, unique characteristics right. of our relations. Yeah. And it has uh, created uh, a very good opportunity right. to the people, especially uh, who resides both sides for the uh, border. But it uh, is also posing some uh, new uh, challenges as well, right. because sometimes it has been uh, misused 
by those uh, unwanted elements mm. uh, who are just um, uh, who have uh, who has vested uh, um, interest they uh, make some cross border crimes right. and use uh, the open border so uh, our major concern is how we can make we can regulate it right. Right. Uh, th there is no any uh, question uh, in the agenda uh, to to uh, close the border or to have a other um, system uh, but the regulation is important. So, are you talking about it? Uh, with you? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, we have the uh, eminent, eminent persons groups which right. is working under the uh, given TOR. Uh, it is working on uh, the 1950s treaty and uh, other related issues as well. And I, so far, I know it is a uh, major agenda. Uh, during their discussion and we are expecting they will um, prescribe they will uh, suggest some uh, important uh, recommendations uh, how we can uh, regulate how, how we can uh, make uh, the our open border more um, easier to the people and more strict to the uh, unwanted elements okay let's come to sark sir you are also chair of sark uh, at present, and SARC summit is not taking place for a long time because of issue of terrorism, and because of the issue of terrorism emanating from one of the member countries, Pakistan. But there has been demands also from the SARC members, uh, seemingly out, uh, outwardly or inwardly, that there should be SARC summit. So, are you in talk with all the member countries about SARC summit? Yes, and we count uh, high about the importance of the SARC yeah. because it is a platform of uh, one point around eight billion uh, people. Uh, almost one fourth are below the poverty line. Yeah, it is a challenging issue for the all the governments, uh, eight governments under the uh, SARC perimeter, and. Uh, it is uh, worrisome issue that uh, if you compare other regional uh, organizations, right. we are very far um, lagging behind to uh, address the requirements of the day. So that's why we, uh, we should have uh, reactivated, yeah. uh, re reactivate it. Uh, yes, there are problems. Uh, and why do we think that Negotiations are, are the best alternatives to settle uh, the Muslim nation. the chair of SARC, have you talked to Pakistan to refrain from such type of activity? Uh, Nepal always uh, have a consistent uh, policy. We uh, oppose any uh, type of terrorism. We oppose any type of uh, use of uh, terrorist activities uh, against uh, either any uh, country's national interest or uh, against to the innocent people. It is our consistent policy. Whenever it happens, Nepal always condemns and but Nepal But if you always... remember, your own territory, your own airport was misused for taking the flight to... Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, yes. So, so, uh, um, uh, so we are very uh, uh, concerned about it. Yeah. But what we, I think, and what Nepal will uh, reiterate its position is that even if there are some uh, serious problems, two countries, uh, uh, countries, uh, parties, um, sides should uh, explore a new uh, way to communicate to uh, resolve the problem uh, so, so through yes, yes, negotiation. Right. Don't you think that when SARC is a, such a uh, conglomeration where every country has been associated with every country, all of the members are like the same, sharing the same culture, saying the same territory once upon a time like that. So don't you think that there should be some open talk on these issues because territorial issues are separate issues. India and China have territorial issues, but there is no all the time firing between the two countries on territory. There is no uh, use of uh, terrorism as a weapon of uh, diplomacy, but it happens. 
from the side of Pakistan. So can, uh, don't you think that SARC members should clearly speak that this is impeding the development and uh, uh, homogeneity of SARC? I think there, are, uh, there is common understanding yeah. against uh, any type of uh, use of uh, terrorist activities and I don't think that uh, no single country have a reservation on that regard. But what again I would like to uh, focus, um, emphasize is that negotiations, yes. talks, communications should be there and such type of platforms should be uh, used as a platform yes. to uh, mitigate the uh, differences. So that's why uh, we uh, want to SARC more um, activated and more focused on the uh, people, uh, especially those who are uh, underdeveloped and uh, it is our duty to explore a new uh, vista of the co partnership and the cooperation so that we can uh, address those concerns. SARC is uh, lagging behind in various uh, okay. sectors. Just uh, I would like to add two more things. Uh, Intra-regional uh, trade is very uh, minimal yeah. and uh, inter-regional investment also is very minimal. So we should uh, focus on that, that area so that uh, this uh, organization uh, can, could become a instrument to the uh, aspiration of the people. So are you going to talk to Prime Minister Nain Modi about this? We have already talked uh, during the um, Prime Minister all his visit in New Delhi and uh, definitely uh, we will again uh, ask to uh, make conducive environment not only with um, Prime Minister Modi ji, we are talking with other uh, countries as well to uh, explore a new uh, way uh, so that we can uh, have a uh, SARC process again. Although uh, some processes are, are um, uh, continue and on, but the summit is most important. Okay. Yeah. So my last question. There has been a lot of uh, misunderstanding about India-Nepal relationship. Are you trying both India and Nepal are trying somehow to send a message after this visit that, sure. uh, that we are entering, we should enter into a new era of relationship. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so what I think is that friendship and trust are more important uh, rather uh, the any special agreement or any MOU. So uh, the visits uh, either by our Prime Minister uh, to India or uh, Excellency Narendra Modi's visit to Nepal, they are focused to uh, the trust building, to explore the new areas and to have a more um, a trusted friendship. Uh, in close neighbors, Sometimes there may be uh, some misunderstandings. Yes, we have some ups and downs in the past, yeah. and we have learned a lot uh, from uh, that uh, situation. And basically, the India has. Uh, we we do believe that India has also uh, some uh, drawn some conclusions and lessons what uh, went wrong. I do not want to uh, make. Uh, uh, those wounds alive again. Okay. We we should uh, focus on the future perspectives. We have a lot of potentials uh, yet unleashed. Yeah. So we should uh, list uh, unleash those uh, potentials so that uh, the people of both uh, countries can be benefited. So thank you so much, Mr. Giawali, the Foreign Minister of Nepal. We have lots of potential that can be tapped. But the major question has been remaining that there is, there was some sort of misunderstanding between both the governments. And now when Prime Minister is coming here, it is his third visit to Nepal, yeah. I think, in his whole tenure. Yeah. And it is one of the heartening things between the two countries. Yeah. So we expect that something new and Nepal and India may enter into a new era. That's yeah. all in Indian Standard Time. Yeah. Thank you so much. 
Thanks. Thank Thank you. Suman for Television with camera person Manoj and DK Pandey in Kathmandu.